There was little left of the house in the West Bank city of Nablus where Tahir was staying after Israeli special forces had finished with it. First they sprayed it with machine gun fire, then they fired in a tank shell before raising the house with a bulldozer. Sources within Hamas described Tahir as a leading bomb maker in the group's military wing. Israeli authorities handed his body over to the Palestinians early Monday. A funeral is expected to take place when there's a break in the curfew which confines the city's 115,000 residents to their homes. The Israeli army claims Tahir was responsible for a bus attack in Jerusalem that killed 19 Israelis in mid-June, prompting Israel's latest West Bank military campaign. Israel also believes he was behind a suicide bombing at a Tel Aviv disco that killed 21 people, many of them teenagers. Israel's prime minister said the killing was all about self-defense for Israelis. I speak about um, a murderer that uh, committed the most uh, terrible crimes and um, our position is, and I'm glad that that is also the position of uh, President Bush, that there is no compromise with terror and one should uh, struggle against terror, that's what we are doing and uh, of course uh, <coughs> we are exercising our right for self-defense, we have done that and we are going to continue to do that. U.S. President George W. Bush has supported Israel's right to defend itself, though Washington has said it opposes targeted killings. But the cycle of violence isn't likely to end. Hamas sources say revenge for Tahir's death is now their top priority.